Emperor Concerto. That's right. That was really loud. You're in a good place, Matthew. <laughs> I really didn't think before I set up where I was going to sit. Tamara, what makes Beethoven's beginnings so good? They're so memorable, those openings. For example, The suffering, the pathos, the pathetique. The Moonlight Sonata. It's the Emperor Concerto. Beethoven in a better mood, but is it? It's another concerto. You've got four choices. It's the only Beethoven concerto that the pianist starts. Up uh, number four. I'm getting gremlins, ogres, and there's a threat. The threat sonata <laughs> of passion. The appassionata. <laughs> You've probably played it, Matthew. Nope, I haven't. Beethoven always knows how to grab your attention right at the start, but he does it in several different kinds of ways. How about the Moonlight Sonata and this very mysterious, almost subconscious opening? So we have this C sharp minor chord, which we start on. It's quite a dark minor chord and it wasn't used very much at the time. So that's already unusual. Famous opening bars. You notice we have this sinking of the left hand. As if we're being, we're going down into a, a different level. The right hand has these chords, these triads, but broken. We step down. We actually come to A major which usually is quite a bright key, but never sounded so mournful. And D major, so D major. But now, total change of complexion. And we're also playing adagio very slowly, and he writes sostenuto and pianissimo, and to use the pedal. So all the things that can express mystery, darkness, something inward looking. So after that sombre and unusual opening of the Moonlight Sonata, now think about this opening. That's so wholesome. Your troubles melt away. There's a kinship about that particular piece. There's a friendliness. There's a reaching out to your fellow man. Are you scared, Matthew? I am, I'm very scared. Again, we've got a minor chord, but this time, so we don't play the chord, we walk through the chord, and then we walk all the way up the piano. To the middle, and ask you a question. Then, very unusually, we go into this key. G flat major, so. Notice how that is a kind of shift upward and it's really surprising. So there's an unsettledness about this opening. And of course, what's going to happen after all this quiet 
these quiet questions. We're actually going to play loud chords eventually. Woo! So <laughs> the threat is fulfilled. So E flat major, you know, it's it's often the heroic key. Heroica. Yeah, that's right. The pianist immediately has this cadenza in E flat, so arpeggios. Really announcing yourself. And you come down the piano and then a trill and you go up again. And then the next chord. But this is really all just cadenza and prelude. And then we get to the actual theme of the piece, which is. Again, you know, it's a, it's a rhythmic theme and it's got that feeling of majesty about it. In the Pathetique Sonata, you have this very dramatic opening, this tragic opening. The C minor chord. But what comes after it has a feeling of, you know, the, this pathos, which is where that pathetique comes from. There's pain there. People didn't start their sonatas with big minor chords, and so everyone would have sat up, sat up immediately in their chair. How can you top that? So what's missing from that little collection is the probably the greatest earworm in music and I'm sure the most famous trill, this one. No, 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 Immediately. No, no, no. And I remember the pianist Geoffrey Tozer talking about what a beautiful piece it is and one of the most beautiful ever written and yet you hardly ever hear it on the concert platform. And he always used to make a point of playing for Elise as an encore. It's got an almost a, like a folk quality about it. So, eh? It's almost, you know, it could be like green sleeves. Yeah, it could be know? green sleeves. It's got that feeling, that um, timeless feeling about it. It's quite hard to do trills on the piano. It's quite an advanced thing. So when you have a trill like this, it's easy for the notes to stick out too much. And so, of course, in the course of for release, you've got many trills. And if you don't shape them, they can sound a little bit mechanical. Thank you so much, Tamara. It's been an absolute privilege to be sitting almost inside the piano while you play. Matthew, come back anytime. Five and four, right hand, E, and then D Feels. sharp. You need fifth finger because you're going to play Is a whole lot again. <laughs> stop me, just stop. It's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs>